is the driver's seat not in the middle of a car? And this is a very hmm. interesting answer. Uh, here's George Meany, everybody. Exciting oh, times. You know it's Friday when, uh, when Borge is here. And I know, Leanne, you've missed out on calling him Borge for a number of weeks. So here's your chance. Nice. Hello, I, I, I got the, the um, I think it was a week ago that we saw each other, right? Yes, yes I was at the not, not for a country. long time before then. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, there he is. So, George, I sent a couple of my friends around to visit you at the uh, Festival of Motoring. Did they pop around and tell you that I'd sent them? Not to my knowledge. I yeah. think, uh, uh, no, nobody said friends. to me, Gareth sent me. Time for new friends. That's what I say. <laughs> All right, so, to be so George. I, I got to say, it was really exciting. We never know. I, I, I make a joke about this every week, but we don't actually know where we're going to see you. You sometimes in a plane, sometimes in a boat, sometimes in a car. Sometimes you're at the festival motoring. How did it go? It looked like you guys had an amazing stand there. We had probably the busiest stand. And I think the reason was we were giving away um, free rides in supercars. Mm. So the, the queue got incredibly long. We had uh, three um, GTRs and uh, two 350Zs. Um, rotating and one uh, three four eight Ferrari, so uh, it was it was incredibly exciting. There were lots of people, um, but you know some consumers um, lost their shit, and uh, um, oh, yeah. you know we had to really handle that delicately because they had to wait in a queue for an hour or two. Oh um, come on! Um, but uh, but we said to them, listen, yeah, everyone else is charging 1,500 Rand, 2,500 Rand for a ride in a supercar. We're giving it away for free. We can't control hundreds of people coming here. So, um, so you know, it was that's a little bit of a lesson. To, George, that's when you need to pull out your gun and just say to them, right. You, you, listen, people. Shut up or I'm going to shoot you. That's what you need to do. <laughs> See, so, uh, George, but, again, there was, no good deed goes unpunished. Here you are giving well, people free rides and supercars and they complain. Well, they, I mean, it was the vast majority, m minority. So, uh, you know, you can't, can't kind of paint everybody with the same tarred brush. But yeah, I guess no good deed goes All unpunished. Right. There were those, those individuals. Um, one, uh, uh, one, one gentleman and his son stood in the queue. And they were, because the son couldn't get a ride in the Ferrari and it was only the 350Z available, chucked his pass on the floor and... And then stormed oh, out, but uh, oh come on, people are so, people are so put on just your so, big girl panties. Ugh. All right, oh my god. <laughs> anyway, listen, well done. I mean, you probably gave a bunch of people who've never been and will never be again uh, in one of those cars uh, the, the the ride of a lifetime. So you yeah. know, take the good and don't don't worry about that uh, that grumpy dad. Screw yeah, him. well, I mean, it was the vast, vast majority. I mean, if it's under single-digit mm. percentages of people that lost their sure. uh, their, their their stuff, it was uh, it was a lot. So, but it was, I need it to was... watch, right? And people are, people don't have any self-awareness, so they do these things and they don't realize like how the rest of us are looking at them and kind of that's a bit embarrassing. Yeah. People lose their radar when there's free stuff around. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's true. And I was very proud of my team because. None of the team lost their cool. They handled it with kit gloves, uh, explained, you know, um, and uh, and tried to just diffuse the situation when it did happen. So, George, what else have you got for us this morning? So, did you know, Gareth, that years, decades gone by, maybe, um, police cars? When and and I mean, this obviously comes from a story out of America. Um, when a police car stopped. Uh, a a consumer, um, they would get out of the car and they would touch the boot of the car. I don't know if you've ever noticed that. And it, it, it comes through in movies as well, but it's a real thing. They touch the boot of a car. And the reason they touch the boot of a car is because, <clears throat> first of all, to see that the boot was closed. But the more oh. important reason was to leave fingerprints on as evidence on the car to show that the police officer was actually there. Hmm. Okay, why why would they also check that the boot was closed? Is that a thing? Um, so check the boot was closed, and then also startle the driver. So there was oh. a, there was another thing, um, and uh, you know, don't know why they checked the boot was closed, but these were the three reasons they touched the boot of the car, main, mainly being the fingerprints. Um, I know and, why they uh, why they checked if it was closed, because there might be a chance that that Asian guy from The Hangover would come out and go. Uh. <laughs> motherfuckers <laughs> completely naked um, george do they still do that 
So apparently it's still done just as a, a matter of course, but it's not necessary because of the police cars, dash cams and, uh, um, and, and you know, evidence is being created that the police officer was there. But the main reason was to prove that the police officer was there. There was fingerprints left on the car by the police officer. Okay. So Apparently they still um, do it. American cops now touch the back light um, and they still do. Uh, exactly that. That's what I just got a message from somebody about now. So that's interesting. Yeah. So uh, I, I didn't know that. I, you know, I didn't know it was a thing um, and the reasons why. But there you go. There, there's the reasons why. And then uh, we spoke we spoke previously about um, the dots on the edge of a windscreen. Um, I don't know if you remember us talking about why those dots yes. exist and that it's a reinforcement for the glass between the ceramic. Correct. Um, so... Um, I don't know if you've ever no if you've noticed lately that the tint um, has disappeared off the top of a windscreen. You don't really see it too much anymore. Yeah, it was kind of very old. Um, it reminds me of my aunt and uncle's pale yellow Peugeot from from the the eighties, where it was it was there to kind of shield your eyes while you were driving. A lovely brown hue around the edge yes, of the glass yes it was either oh, brown green or blue yeah, that's great yes. very 70s like any brown kind of glass is very 70s <laughs> very 70s and a two-tone car with a with a, with a brown yes. roof and a cream body which i see is coming back now in the suzuki mm. oh um, nice so this okay. that's what we needed more of that the, the only reason that the tint existed was for UV rays for your eyes and to um, uh, throw shade into the car so that the UV rays didn't uh, didn't mess up the up upholstery too much. But it's uh, it's <laughs> largely gone away. Um, and as a matter of fact, I didn't even notice it go away because uh, no. only when I read the story did I realize, hold on a second, I, I actually have to go to my car to check if there's a piece of tint on the top of the windscreen. Yeah. I also haven't noticed. This is this is uh, this is news to me this morning. Oh, I mean, you guys don't know how you know how old my car is, and it, it doesn't have that anymore. It's quite an it's, it's quite been, an old thing. You see, they take these things away from us, George, and they don't even tell us. And then we figure it out years later, and we feel uh, regret that we we lost something that we didn't even know we'd lost. <laughs> That's how it works. So deprived. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then a second to last is I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, um, you know when you when you when you drive past some farms, I've only seen this very rarely in South Africa, but it's uh, it, I think it's quite a thing in um, in America. Uh, mm -hmm. in that there are tires on top of tarpaulins, or tarpaulins, um, and yeah. uh, you know you wonder what is under those tarpaulins. So there's a reason there are old car tires on those tarpaulins, is because they create what? weight on top of grass. So they put their feed uh. under the tarpaulins, and um, <clears throat> it gets the feed through winter, and that's the reason you see tires on top of tarpaulins. Hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah, I've seen that sometimes, uh, even here. I think you see it in certain parts of the Free State when you drive through there that they've got these uh, these top Paulins with tires on top of them. So now we know no, what it less, is. Just by the way, less just, about the. I just, I'm show, sorry, I'm just going to show people a picture of what uh, what you mean. It sometimes uh, helps to see these things if you're watching us on YouTube. And while we're on YouTube, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I've also got a question for you about the tinting because a friend of mine was. What's wrong, Leanne? And like and subscribe. Oh, I thought you were muttering things to yourself. I thought you totally lost it this morning. That's it. Uh, sorry about that. Um, I, <laughs> you haven't lost your mind. So, George, I wanted to just ask you about the, the tinting thing again. A friend of mine uh, has a car with, like, really dark windows. You can't see anything uh, in there. Is that allowed? Is there, is there a certain regulation that you're allowed to have? Windows of a certain tint, 90% is outlawed, but 50% is okay. Like, what is it? So, um, on the front windows, I believe, um, you have to have um, um, a maximum of a 30% tint. So, 70% of the light needs to get through the, wind, the, the, the side windows. Obviously, your front windscreen okay. can't be tinted. That's just stupid. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but through the side windows. And then I see the back windows of many cars from the manufacturer are actually slightly darker. So mm. I don't know what the regulation is there and how much you can go, but I know the front windows, you have to, um, you have, to have about 70% of the light come through. Okay. All right. Useful info.
That's the kind of thing that we would only learn if we spoke to you about it. All right, what else are you yeah. going to so very lastly, why is the driver's seat not in the middle of a car? And this is a very hmm. interesting answer. Um, and it has... Well, did you, did you, want, you want your passenger to fit in as well. <laughs> yeah. True. <laughs> Although if the driver's seat was in the center of the car, you could have two passengers on either side, right? Hmm. I guess. Um, and so the, the, the main reason is the steering column. If the steering column of the car um, were in the center, that means that the engine wouldn't fit into the engine bay in the front. Oh. Because the steering column would have to go through the center of the engine. So that's the main reason the car, the steering wheel's in the, on the side um, of the car and not, uh, not in the center. So if the engine's not there, the steering column can be wherever it needs to be. Um, okay. um, so I suppose in electric cars in the future, maybe we would have driver's seats in the center. But then you, when you get out, you have to go <laughs> and squiggle your way across the seat just to get out of the door. That's I also guess. true. Yeah, very irritating. <laughs> or you could just have like a big, like a sofa in front instead of, you know, those very old cars. I mean, there are a couple of these, you know, those, those big American cars that they made in the, in the 50s and 60s. They would often have like a sofa in the front. It wasn't two yes. seats. And you'd sit in the middle of that, I suppose. I love seat. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, one, big nice. long, one big long seat in the front. I mean, many cars used to come with that right back yeah. in the day when, uh, when they first made them. And the only reason the two seats were split really was because of the center um, um, column for the, um, for the prop shaft that ran through the middle and the exhaust systems. So, uh, so they, they raised those up into that little column that's in the center. Right. Okay, well, we probably do without that when the, but if you think about, the, um, you know, single driver cars, like in Formula One, for example, they can obviously put you in the middle there and <laughs> yeah, you, don't need, you don't need a Formula One car with a passenger seat or the steering column on the side. So they've got the engine at the back, obviously, and all of that stuff, right? Exactly. Yeah, makes much, much more sense, actually. All right, George, as always, great to see you. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Leanne, what is it with you and your alarms? Is that to wake you up? It's eight o'clock. <laughs> When you've got ADHD, you know, you need something to tell you what to do every 10 minutes. All right, everybody, have an awesome weekend. Be good. If you're not, take photos. We will see you on Monday at 6 a.m. bright and early. Be